Today on the show, we're chatting with Rib Hillis. You might recognize his name. He has been a part of so many fantastic projects. Um, his current one that we're talking about today is on the Inspirational Network, The Tall Tales of Jim Bridger. It's airing now. And this is really cool because we spoke to your network mate, Jonathan Sheck, a couple of days ago about his project that's also on the same network, Blue Ridge. Uh, and this network is very cool. I'm just now becoming familiar with it and the shows that it has on it. It's very cool. Um, thank you for your time. It's great to meet you. Well, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to have me on. And yeah, INSP, uh, it is a, a pretty fun, you know, I mean, they their logo on their on their website is like a cowboy hat on top of the INSP word. So it's a very, you know, cowboy-esque um I don't know how, you know, uh, heart of America kind of kind of network. So I'm I'm super thrilled to be working with them. And obviously our show, Jim Bridger, Tall Tales, Jim Bridger is like the perfect show for a cowboy type network. It is. And what I like about these two shows, yours specifically as well, is that it's it got all of the things uh, that you would want in a drama, a, a procedural type Western but it's also family friendly. So you don't have to rush your children out of the room necessarily to watch it because it's family friendly and you can sit down and talk about it and that sort of thing. Uh, you know, going through your resume, of course, there's Shocktopus first, uh, you know, and we've got Port Charles, Kill Shot, General Hospital, and of course, uh, you have a fun arc on Two and a Half Men, a lot of different things. And of course, Extreme Home Makeover, which we'll talk about at the end here. But I'm interested to know, where did you get interested in this story? And how did the project come about for you? Because it's really good. The G the Jim Bridger story. Jim Bridger story. Yeah, it's just so smart. And yeah, it's so just Jim, a lot of fun. I I spent a lot of time in Montana over the last 10 years. I, I, I went up to make a movie called Cowboys versus Dinosaurs 10 years ago. Yes. Became best friends with the director on that, Ari Novak, and I would go up there in the summers. Uh, we'd make movies. We've done, gosh, I don't even know, like five or six movies. We have one that's coming out called Powder Pup that we we shot, um, I think, a year and a half ago, and it's going to get released. Lionsgate's putting it out. So anyway, I've spent a lot of time in Montana. And when I saw the character breakdown for Jim Bridger, the tall tales of Jim Bridger, I knew exactly who Jim Bridger was. It was like, you know, you can't spend time in Montana and that area and not have heard of Bridger Pass, Bridger Bowl, like these locations that are named after this real life guy. So it worked out really well. I was able to get, you know, get an audition for the character of Jim and took a few months, but then, and I ended up in Montana and I was like, yeah, this is, this is where like my life trajectory has been leading towards me coming here to Montana to play this character. It's been, it's been a lot of fun. Yeah. And that's the thing too, is we're talking historical fiction here where where it's a real person so when you are getting this role and figuring things out as an actor and deciding you know how you're going to go about this where does that process begin as a storyteller for you how much research is involved in figuring this character out and deciding you know how you're going to play it this is a unique one for me i'm trying i don't know that i've played many historical figures uh you know i don't think that the character from sharktopus versus terracuda is a historical figure but yeah. <laughs> any any character has as an actor you're like okay how do i want to bring this person life like i imagine they exist in two dimensions in black and white on a page right it's just letters and it's my job to literally breathe life into them and with jim bridger He's a real guy. And obviously I got to do some research. I got a, a couple of fantastic books on him and would Google him and learn and read about him. Um, I luckily checked a few of the boxes of what, you know, I'm the right height, uh, kind of shag, you know, longest shaggy hair, blue eyes. So there was a lot of easy, easy things for me to meld into. I've spent a lot of time in Montana, um, outdoors, ice climbing, rock climbing, and, you know, really sort of embracing that, that outdoors lifestyle. But then, you know, it's just a matter of what the writers come up with. And the writers on our show had a did an amazing job because, it, like you said, it's a historical fiction. 
but we're trying to base it in some reality. So it's not like as as Paul Epstein, our showrunner and creator, director, he comes, he says, it's not like Jim's going to meet Bigfoot. Like that's absurd, right? That's a little, you know, if, if Bigfoot ever shows up on set, it means we're jumping the shark in the show. You know, we're just, but Jim Bridger could meet people like Wyatt Earp. It's conceivable that he could have met some other really incredible historical figures. And so I just had, I, I do research on who these characters were. Um, there's just so much great background on this on this era. So it was it was kind of fun and easy. Yeah. And one of the things I really like about this is the fact that, and these shows in particular, is there's like always that possibility that they could have crossed paths with some of these other great historical figures as well, which I think makes it fun because it, it, it causes a, a bunch of, it allows you to, suspend belief a little bit and and really buy into the storytelling that's happening. It's just a lot of fun. I mean, I can't imagine you had to have had just the best time working on this because uh, it's just really well done in the cinematography and everything that goes along with it is just really spectacular for sure. For sure. Well, I'm, I'm glad you appreciate it. And yes, we had the best time. It was, it was a lot of work. I've been asked a few times, like tell me some funny stories from set. And I, I'm kind of stumped because we just, we worked and that to, that to me and to the people I worked with, that was the fun part. Yeah. But we just, we would go to, we'd get there to set every day. We were out uh, in outside of Missoula, Montana um, on this incredible location that you, it's hard not to just look at it and be like, this is amazing. Like you set up the camera, like there's a, a river rolling by and there's these mountains and hawks floating around and, it just was incredible. And, and we just, we just worked, we just worked trying to bring this, this story to life. And, you know, that's where the fun all happened was, uh, you know, getting up, getting a chance to go do this and play these characters every day. It was long and hard. Uh, but man, every night that I got home, I felt like I earned a good night's sleep. And every morning I woke up, I was like, I can't wait to get back to set. <laughs> that's very cool. Yeah. There's so many great projects that have filmed in Missoula I was talking to Clint Howard last year about an independent Western he did with Nicolas Cage and how they filmed there and just how beautiful it is. I'm in Colorado and I, we have beauty here, but I think Montana is so different as far as that goes. My uh, Colorado is where I, I went to Boulder university of Colorado. Okay. Now that I was going to ask you about that. Yeah. I'm in Loveland. I am sure you know where Loveland is. I do. I do. Yeah. Do you make Colorado, gots? Colorado, I went to Colorado for other reasons, but I fell in love with the mountains. Like, yeah. I, like literally to this day, when I see the mountains, I'm like, oh, I'm like a dog that you let out of the car on a long road trip and it just runs around. Like, I'm like, I want to climb that mountain. I want to run up this. I want to do that. Like, I love the mountains. So that I, in that regard, it was, I, I've spent a lifetime preparing to play Jim Bridger. Cause obviously he never left. He stayed in the West. Yeah. In the frontier is, you know, for four, 30, 40 years, he get, went back, I think once uh, for, and he was like, ah, the heck with this and went back out there. So. Yeah. It's a beautiful place for sure. Especially coming from California and having <laughs> lived that life <laughs> for so long. It's so different. Well, again, just mentioning your, uh, work here ugly betty general hospital baywatch two and a half men of course the rookie all of these projects and then you get this where you're helming the series i mean you've done big things but this is huge that has to be validating as an actor to have worked all of those jobs which are all like individualistically badges of honor right and then now you get this like how does that make you feel just on a very human level on a very visceral level for you having worked for so long and so many years. And now you get this and it's like, the sky is the limit. I would think. Well, thank you very much. Um, yeah. Yeah. You know, that is a valid point. I like anybody else in a career that they choose, whether you be an actor or, you know, a reporter or a teacher, you know, we, we put a lot of time and effort into things in order to, to sort of achieve or get to a level where you're like, okay, I feel like I've, I've arrived or I've done something that I can hang my hat on. Um, I certainly was proud of everything I've done in my career thus far, but Jim Bridger is definitely a pinnacle for me. It's been an incredible honor 
uh, and in responsibility to be the title character of this show. And I get to do it with these incredible people. The, the production company, Warm Springs, based in Missoula, amazing people. They put together a great crew, every department, our makeup, wardrobe, camera, all these people. And then all these incredible actors come in. But myself, as the as in the business, is called the number one. You know, the number one in the call sheet. You know? Yeah, that's like um, where you want to be. And as the number one, I get this incredible opportunity to to interact with everyone uh, on a level that you don't get to if you come in as a day player. I was on the rookie and had an amazing time, but I didn't know anybody personally. But when you're the number one, you know you you know these people. You work with them. You get to come in every day, and when you you have experiences and you, you know, you get to share, you get to, you get to, you get to get advice from them. You get to give pep talks. It really was a, a wonderful, like it is the goal. I would think I would imagine for any actor to be in that position. And I have loved it and I can't wait till we get the chance to go back up and do it again. But it's um, with that comes a bit of responsibility, but honestly, I felt like it was the right time for me. I'm re I'm ready to work. That's all I want to do. Yeah, I, no, I understand. I get it. I don't it. want to go to parties. I don't give a shit about red carpets. I don't care about gifting suites. I don't care about, all I care about is going and doing the work. Now, that being said, you know, somebody once asked me, would you like to be uh, a people's sexiest man alive? And I said, of course I would. Not for vanity reasons, because it is a badge of honor. It is that thing. It's like the gold watch that you get. You don't become the sexiest man alive because you've done one. Like there's a, there's a, it's like, it indicates that you've been around and I don't care whatever, whatever sort of title or, or badge of honor you would get. But for me, obviously this is it to be able to play Jim Bridger uh, for INSP for warm Springs and everybody that's put their effort into it, have the chance to talk to you. <laughs> to just Yeah. Well, I'm a interview. huge fan of yours. Like I, I remember extreme home makeover and it was like early 2000s i was watching clips and it just shows me in my head and visually like that was a time where there was no streaming there was no nothing i mean we made appointments to watch television <laughs> yes the old days <laughs> right and i saw advertisements in the lower left you know for lost you know like the season premiere i want to ask you about that show because it was so interesting and groundbreaking at the time where reality television was just at its peak was that a positive experience for you because you were going from city to city state to state all the time and you're going in and you are changing people's lives i mean yeah. that's that's a that was a big deal uh ty and everybody that you worked with yeah. And he would be on the bus and you'd watch the VHS tape and look at a little Polaroid of the family and then go in. Yeah. And that was a huge deal for me and an incredible honor to be a part of that show. And we really did change people's lives. The people that the show worked with, uh, you know, that that the uh, production, the producers found were people who were in dire need. And, you know, you imagine interviewing them, like their lives changed, like whew, you go from one trajectory to another. We had an amazing time. I personally had an incredible time working with every single one of the families I worked with. I was on it for two years. I think I did. I think I did 16 shows total. Uh, still in touch with a few of the families. They'll message me on Facebook or they'll comment on things. And it was just an incredible experience because, like you said, we'd we'd go into these towns. We'd watch a little video about the family. Obviously, we had a little bit of background, you know, off camera, but we would meet them. I would meet them for the first time. I think everyone, I think, yeah, everyone, Ty included, we met them on that morning when we would knock on their door kind of thing. They knew we were coming. I think what the producers would say is, we're going to do a final interview round um, to see if you're going to be the family. So they would put microphones on them because, the, you know, you'd notice when they would run out. But they didn't know, no, like 100% that Ty was going to show up that day with the rest of us. And so it was a really emotional experience. I remember, you know, I remember getting very emotional on a few sets because there was some storylines with kids and I had young kids at the time, but what a great show. Such a, such a pleasure to be a part of that show. Do your kids show any interest in the industry, so to speak? Um, I have four kids. The older two are athletes and uh, academics and, living wonderful lives my my oldest son actually played my son in a movie with my wife that i my wife now so jessica morris is my wife and oh, yeah. we met on a movie 
called um, Haunting of the Innocent. And we cast my son, Dane, as our son. So it was my real son and then Jessica. And Jess and I met in that movie. And here we are. We're married now. But uh, neither of the older are going to probably pursue acting anymore. But the youngest one, um, the eight-year-old, he's done some school plays. And if you ask him what he does, he'd be like, oh, I'm an actor. I'm like, dude, you've never done anything. You've just done school plays. <laughs> I mean, I'm teasing. But, you know, he 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 thinks of himself as an actor, which is the first step. Although it's funny, we talk, my wife and I talk about it. Like um, just today, she was like, what would your advice be for young actors? And we joked and be like, choose something else. Do anything but this. Because it is a really hard career and it's wonderful to have the opportunity to talk to you, but there is a lot of years and time and effort that's gone into being able to sit here with you today. Like it is people. Yeah, your wife violent. said the same thing when we spoke to her a few weeks ago, I think, um, or maybe it was before the end of the year. I can't remember, but we had just gone and we talked about her new film and things like that. Yeah, I mean, it's hard work to get to this place because a lot of people see it. And they don't realize. I want to ask you one or two more questions before we wrap here. But well, you mentioned the rookie. That was a lot of fun. I'm interested to know because these shows are badges of honor. Some for some, it's you know law and order. You kind of get on these shows. But when you show up to do a day's worth of work as like a cold open story or whatever the case might be, is it just pretty much run and gun when you get there for a show like that? It's a well oiled machine. You get briefed, you have your size, and then you're just filming because they run a pretty tight ship. Yeah, I would say that was pretty accurate. Obviously, you know, they're 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 well oiled and they know where they want to be and what they want to shoot. I mean, you get to meet um, you know, you get to meet your person you're gonna be working with, and you might do a little quick sort of walkthrough, but yeah, it wasn't I we didn't have any advanced rehearsals. There was no table reads, uh for, you're just like fine. Yeah, here you go. <laughs> Just show up. Yep. And it was it's funny when I shot the rookie, it was it was very close uh, right around the corner from here. Like I'd been on that street and uh, yeah, it was. And similarly, when people show up to come do Jim Bridger with me, you know, I, I I'm there every day in pretty much every scene. And we have actors coming in um, every week and, you know, they're coming in just ready to roll. But we're we're so busy. We don't have the time, you know, to. They they show up. I meet them on the bus, the van ride to set, and and then I you know I get into makeup and I have this giant beard and we're like we're on set and we're like let's go. Uh, so it's um yeah that's funny. I never really thought about how now I'm the other side of that and we're the yeah. well machine and we have our our day players coming in and just you know how uh, I, we definitely welcome them and they welcomed me on the rookie as well. But um, it is interesting to consider that you have to kind of give someone a chance to feel feel like they're part of the family obviously because you want people to be able to you know give their best performances so yeah get past all the nerves well i want to ask this is a really great show and there are a lot of things that could be helmed from it messages stories uh life lessons is there one or two things uh rib that you want viewers to get when they get a chance to watch uh this show because it's just that good and i feel like there's a lot we could maybe learn. It's a Western, it's historical yeah. fiction, but there's also a lot of great messages each there show too. Definitely, each show definitely has kind of a, a kind of a fable or a message. I mean, one of them was like, just because you've got the right to do something doesn't mean it's not the wrong thing to do. Right. It was a, Jim, Jim said that to Wyatt Earp. And another one he says to his partner, he says, it's all nothing but fool's gold, Vasquez. Um, yeah, every episode tries to have a sort of a message that... Uh, you know, sort of a fable. Um, you know, these and I'm in the the showrunner and director Paul Epstein talked about how you know this show. It really, at the root of it, it is what it's one of the things you can think of. This is America. This is what we think of America: the fables, the sort of the things that you know the America sort of grew roots out of. And so every episode kind of tries to have something, some sort of through line to like what it is to be uh, an American. And Jim Bridger, again, there's a lot of historical figures in this world that you look at and you're like, oh, I kind of have this like side that we don't want to talk about. From what I've experienced and read and learned and researched, and I've done a lot and talked to a lot of people, Jim it comes across as a pretty solid guy. He, he lived a, a difficult life. He had to make some hard choices. Obviously, 
you know, violence, it was a part of his life, whether it was hunting or defending himself or, you know, revenging, but he doesn't have like a Jim Bridger, uh, you know, massacre story. And so he's a good character to kind of look at as a, as a human, as a man, as an American and be like, all right, he made the best choices he could. He definitely tried to de-escalate scenarios. He was a big advocate for avoiding going through what, I guess the Bozeman trail, which sent would send him through um, Red Cloud's land, which was a big part of the Red Cloud War, which was sort of one of the one of the last big wars in the you know the Indian Ameri um frontiersman wars. And Jim was pressing enough to know, like, let's not step on these guys' toes. So it's it's a lot of fun to watch and a lot of fun to be Jim. And you know, I often find myself. I wish I could have met him. I wish I could be him, <laughs> not just on the show, because he just seemed like a good guy. I love it. Well said. Well, Rib, it's a pleasure. Say hi to your wife for us. We I had will. great fun with her as well. Okay. And it's very cool to have a family duo uh, as guests who share the same passions and are in the same business and they get it. So uh, very cool. Congratulations on this to Talk Thank Tales. You. Jim Bridger now on INSP. Uh, with consecutive episodes streaming. Thank you for your time. It was great to hang out today. My pleasure.